Hi everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. In an effort to understand how modern terrestrial animals evolved from fish, scientists have induced a modern fish to walk on dry land. That fish is Polypterus senegalis, also known as the Senegal bachir or the dragonfish. It has the ability to breathe air and survive out of the water and can pull itself forward using its pectoral fins. Researchers at McGill University raised a generation of P. Senegalis outside the water for a full year and studied how living on land altered them compared to typical water-based members of their species. That study is published in the journal Nature. The researchers found that fish raised on land demonstrated noticeable changes in their behavior and anatomy. For example, the fish held their pectoral fins closer to their bodies, which made it easier for them to move. Their skeletons also changed, again when compared with water-based fish of their species, elongating and developing stronger attachments for those pectoral fins. They also lifted their heads higher. The McGill researchers believe this study offers insights into the behavioral and physiological changes undergone by the fish who left the water in favor of the land 400 million years ago, the ancestors from which we and all modern tetrapods evolved. Next up, researchers in Vienna have developed an extraordinary new imaging technique that relies on the principles of quantum physics. The new method allows an image of an object to be obtained without the light illuminating the object ever interacting with the camera. It works by exploiting the phenomenon of quantum entanglement. A laser passes through two crystals creating pairs of entangled photons, one infrared and one red. Only the infrared photons are allowed to interact with the object, and the camera used to make the image can only see the red photons, which never interacted with the object. And yet, when an object is placed between the two crystals, an image emerges. For their first image, the researchers chose, what else? A cat. And unlike Schrodinger's cat, this one definitely looks alive and well. And finally, researchers in Germany have created a nanoscale assembly line. Assembly lines have been used to manufacture complex machinery and appliances for over a hundred years. This nanoscale assembly line, developed by researchers at ETH Zurich, has many of the same features as those larger, older counterparts. A conveyor belt, assembly stations where new components are attached to the product, even a motor to keep the whole thing moving. But instead of making automobiles or washing machines, this assembly line manufactures molecules. The conveyor belt is a carpet of microtubules, the motor is the ATP-powered protein kinesin, and the products are complex molecules assembled one piece at a time as they move down the line. The researchers stress that at this point this isn't much more than a proof of concept. Practical applications are still a way off. But when the research reaches that point, those practical applications could include DNA modification and assembly of nanotechnology. A modern fish that walks on land helps us to learn about our earliest terrestrial ancestors. Quantum entanglement allows a camera to photograph an object it can't actually see, and researchers build the smallest assembly line ever. That's the good news. I don't know. I think it's good. Are you up for a hundred more of these?